Hello and welcome to a little equipment video on this channel. Contrary to my past equipment videos, this one will not be about camera gear. I'll focus on my office setup here and yeah, show you how I changed it. So one month ago, I basically ditched my old HP workstation, which I've been using for nine years now. So I've upgraded it over the years a bit to yeah, stay or to keep it fast enough. But now was the time to make an update. And yeah, you see it here. So I went with the Dell XPS 9510. And yeah, since this is at the core of my office setup, I'll do a bit of a review now. Also showing some of the accessories I use, talking about how to set it up properly for content creation because there are a few settings, some obvious, some a little bit hidden, which you need to do if you want to use it for yeah, audio recording, video editing, photo editing and stuff like that. Yeah, and I'll now start talking about why I bought it, what I like, what I don't like, and then we're gonna head into some of the details of the setup. So I've made a list here, but let's first start with the why. So yeah, there will be actually some travels coming up in the next year or yeah, they will start roughly in two or three months already. I'll talk about this in another video, but those travels will require me to be able to edit not only photos on the go, but also videos. And for this, I need a powerful laptop, which this Dell XPS is. So I can edit videos on it, I can edit photos on it. And also the reason I went with it and waited that long, because actually since two years, I'm already thinking about getting a laptop, but only now I think those small devices, which are very compact, are fast enough to really fulfill all the needs I have. So it's basically a lot or not a lot, but quite a bit faster than the HP workstation I had while still fitting in such a compact chassis. And yeah, I not only use it while traveling, I also now use it here in the office. So I currently have a Dell Thunderbolt station on back order, which I set up here to connect my external hard drives and the monitor. So currently what I'm using here is just a little USB um, setup from Anchor, just 30 bucks this thing. I bought it mainly for traveling. I can plug in HDMI monitor to normal USB hard drives, USB-C drive. So it's quite versatile, quite compact, but my real setup will have a larger station here, Thunderbolt station, which is more powerful and which will also be used to power this device. But yeah, as an intermediate solution, this anchor station is quite nice. So let's talk a bit about some of the things I like about this device. And yeah, I already touched on this. It's quite compact, but it's also robust. So because of the aluminum chassis, there's nearly no flex on the display. It feels solid and that's important for me because I want to use it during my travels. It will be yeah, thrown around a bit and yeah, many of the other devices. So you get devices with a similar uh, interior. So I have the one terabyte hard drive, 16 gigabytes of RAM, Core i7 from Intel 11th gen. You get such a setup cheaper from others. But most of the time you then have some plastic uh, chassis and yeah, I don't like this so much. There's a lot of flex on the display. It doesn't feel so yeah, well built and I just wanted a solid laptop. So I went with this one. There are others which are built from aluminum and those are even more expensive. For example, the HP ZBook. I looked at it. So the G7 version, for example, <clears throat> It's in a similar price range, but it overheats or tends to overheat from the reviews I heard. And the new one, well, it's astronomically expensive. So I think I pay like a thousand bucks more for a similar configuration. So this was out of question. Same for the new Lenovo's. So I went with this one and I'm quite happy. Also, I like the display. The size of it, 16 by 10 with the thin bezels, this allows this device to be quite compact compared to other 15 inch devices. And yeah, also 
yeah, the ports. So I have an SD card reader, which many have, but some also only have a micro SD card. I need SD card to import my photos. I have three USB-C ports, which is all I need. Two of those are Thunderbolt ports. So I use one of those to plug in the Thunderbolt station once it arrives. And yeah, it's really all I need. For example, on my travels, I bring this SanDisk Extreme drive. This is where on which I added my photos. So I have like two terabytes here, all my photos which I currently edit. So it's not all my photos I've ever taken, but the last five years are on it. When I plug it in, um, I can use Lightroom. I can use Photoshop, it's very fast. So yeah, that's a nice option. On the internal drive, I usually have my videos which I'm currently working on. So plenty of space. Um, I have here this Arc Mouse from Microsoft. It's USB. It's quite compact. Really like it because I don't need to plug it in somehow. It's using USB. Um, it works very nice. The only problem is if I have it sit for like five seconds, when I first move it, there's always a lag and that's a bit of an annoyance. I have to say, I try to play around with some of the energy saving settings, but didn't figure out how I could deactivate it going to sleep every time. But yeah, that's not so bad. So if I'm really working on photos and using it, there's no problem. So this device is quite nice and also flat. So I can put everything into this thin and compact bag when I'm traveling. Yeah. So another thing, this laptop and this configuration is actually powerful enough for video editing. And yeah, this was important. It's also one of the reasons I bought it, right? So I use DaVinci Resolve. I can edit 4K video here and yeah, actually export it with like 10 to 12 frames per second. If I export H.264 with um, the main profile, so the profiles are important. If you use high profile, you get a little less uh, frames per second for export, but that's fine. Typical YouTube video export 20 to 30 minutes. So quite okay for me. Um, also battery life, it's not the best, but it's decent enough. So you have to note if you edit video on this, so I did like 90 minutes of editing DaVinci Resolve, I drained like 60% of the battery already. I could then still use it for like 90 minutes of YouTube, 90 minutes of writing. So in, in such a use case, I get like four to five hours out of it. It's not so much, but yeah, normally when I do video, I would plug it in. Also, when I do just Netflix, it says like eight to 10 hours writing, like 10 hours uh, if I browse the internet. So typical use, I'd say like around six to seven hours. But as I said, video editing and also photo editing will require a little bit more power and you won't get much more than four to five hours. If you do only video, I'd say after two hours, it's, it's flat. So uh, think about this. You should plug it in. Yeah. Now, since I went through the positive stuff, <laughs> I now also have to talk about the negative stuff. And wow, I was shocked actually. So I bought the 9500 version of this last year. And I have the Full HD display, which everybody says is so nice, as well as the others. But not one review mentions one very, for me at least, very big caveat, which is, I'm not sure why, but maybe because of those thin bezels and the way it's built, you get a very huge vignette. So it's so bad that you can actually see it once you open Photoshop, if you have this uh, grayish background or if you are in a browser where you have a white background, um, it's quite distracting. And actually, this is not a single uh, use where, where it happens, right? I bought it last year. I talked to customer service. They said, oh, no, uh, they don't know about this. And they sent me a mechanic with a new display. He exchanged it. By the way, he didn't even notice it so much. Um, I think only creatives notice this, but it's bad in my opinion. And he exchanged it, had the same problem. So I returned it because also the trackpad on the device I had last year had this typical phantom click, which you hear a lot about. This one actually doesn't have it, which is great. So I'm glad to have a device where the trackpad actually works, but I still have this vignette. 
So yeah, I was thinking hard about it. Should I return it? But what would be the alternative? Um, I didn't really have one. And when I edit, I usually use the inner part of the screen and at the sides I have the toolbars. So it's not so bad. And also when I finally prepare the images for print, I do it on my ISO. But if it gets worse, I'll actually have it replaced. So I have a three year extended warranty, so I should be fine with that. So currently, as I said, it's okay. And I have this little video. Um, on the video, it actually is quite visible and you can see what I mean. And yeah, I'm quite confused why nobody talks about this. So that's, that's really strange. Well, having talked about the nearly deal breaker for me, which for me is the only thing that's kind of annoying about this thing. Everything else I, I find works quite well. Let's have a look at some of the setup that's required to get this thing to work properly. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing you need to do if you get this device is really make an update for your BIOS. So log into your Dell account and have it search for drivers and you see here for me it found one so I currently already have the version 1.4 which was the first important update I had to do because before this exporting video was nearly impossible because it would always uh, turn down the uh, processor frequency so make it slow make it fast make it slow and I got maybe six to seven frames per second so after this update here 1.4 I get quite a stable export speed so it's much better in terms of power management but it seems now there's already a new version which fixes a couple of more issues so i'll also install it so with those dell devices when they come out uh, it seems that in the first month there are quite some little fixes coming along so make sure to check the downloads here and get the newest versions to make sure you have the optimal performance and power management. The next setting I show you is important if you want to record such screencast as I do now. So if I hadn't found and turned off this setting, I wouldn't be able to record audio on this device because of some strange noise cancellation that this Max Audio Pro tool does. So this is installed per default on Dell devices and here this output part this actually sounds quite nice so i didn't completely deinstall this tool but what's important is here under the input that you turn this one here off per default it's active and it makes the audio quality of your recordings suffer it swallows some complete words and in the beginning i was completely confused why this happened so i thought it was something some issue with the drivers and stuff like that until i found this tool here deactivated it and now i'm able to record screencasts without problems so that's an important setting after fixing the audio recording it's also important to fix the graphics settings which we as photographers need to be correct. We want to calibrate our devices, which I did using the i1 Color Pro. And I can do another video on that later. But now first, we need to make sure that if we do such a calibration, it will be permanent. So no matter if you're plugged in or if you're working from battery, you want the brightness of the display to stay constant. The colors shouldn't change. And for this, you need to go into the Intel Graphics Command Center, which is installed on the Dell devices. You go to the display and you basically turn off anything that's adaptive or optimized. So for example, a local adaptive contrast enhancements, turn it off. Then you go down here, let's check the video. There's this standard color correction, turn it off. Then in the system, there's also some settings which you'll find here under power. And those are actually very important because this is what messes up your colors, your brightness, if you're doing something just with the battery, if you're not plugged in. And yeah, it took me a while to find this. So actually adaptive brightness, turn it off. And importantly this here, display power savings. If you don't turn it off, the colors will look very weird if you are not plugged in and you will not be able to edit photos on this device. So those four settings, switch everything off and you should be fine. 
And finally, I want to show you how you can optimize DaVinci Resolve to play smoothly. So as I said, 4K video is no problem, but what can sometimes happen if you have many effects, if you're scrubbing here in the timeline, it might be a little bit laggy. So what I usually do is I go to settings here, the timeline settings, and I edit in a timeline resolution of full HD. So even for 4K video, I found that this speeds up the editor quite a bit, at least for me on, on my Dell here. So if I do this, I can edit smoothly and just before I export the video, when I'm completely finished, I set the timeline resolution to 4K, then go to the export tab and export it in 4K. And this way I can edit very well on this Dell device. And before we close this video, one last tip. So if you're now interested in such a device, um, they're actually quite expensive. So for example, the configuration I have costs more than 2000 euros. But when I bought it, I had some discount code because of where I work there, I get some discounts for Dell devices. So that was quite nice. If you don't have such discounts yet, just wait a bit because once Christmas rolls around, usually those devices get discounted. This was also what I did last year when I purchased the 9500 version first time. I did it before Christmas during those Black Friday deals and all this stuff. Dell usually also has this and you can save between 15 and 25% I think. So if you want such a device and have some time, I'd say just wait a bit longer and see once those get discounted. Yeah, and that's it for the video. Hope you liked it. If so, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more and also if you haven't, hit the notification bell because I really don't get many views from notifications it seems as at least due to my analytics so yeah make sure to hit the notification bell to see my videos if you're interested. Okay until then see you!